Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series. I'm Alumide McCauley. Coming up on the program today. Oyo State Government conducts integrity tests on buildings affected by last week's explosion. We also take a look at the dangers of styrofoam use as Lagos State bans the food packaging material. Thank you so much for joining us. Our focus today is on the Southwest region. Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Mr. Adili Alake, says the federal government is awaiting the outcome of the forensic investigation to determine the actual cause of the tragic explosion in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, last week. This was disclosed in a press statement by the Special Assistant on Media, and that is to the minister, Mr. Shogun Tomari. The minister assured Nigerians that the federal government is committed to addressing challenges from the root, hence it's resolved to await the outcome of the forensic investigation. Ms. Alake also says the security agencies shall be allowed to carry out their duties as against acting on speculations as he believes people are better informed and actions can be taken to bring the culprits to book and avoid any recurrence. And as the Ibado explosion entered its sixth day, work continued on site as the debris has been evacuated. The Nigerian Society of Engineers, Geologists and members of the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority are all on ground working to assess the, uh, and ascertain the integrity of the affected buildings. Our correspondent, Bukala Oriowo, reports. Engineers from the Nigeria Society of Engineers getting their brief before setting out for the task ahead. And one person uh, with a camera and all the other things. Please, let's do that. And then Government's mandate has been increased from 250 meter radius to 500, and all affected houses in this catchment area must be assessed. The explosion must have has had an adverse effect on a lot of houses and so it is necessary to check these houses before we can assessing it to be sure that people can actually go in to see if they can bring out their things and probably start doing repairs it's just for safety structural engineers involved in the project say the impact is massive and affected areas must be critically examined most of the buildings where we have checked, um, we have uh, some degree of uh, structural defects, some depending on the severity, and then mostly the roofs have been ripped off, and uh, that has also impacted on the uh, finishes, the roofing, uh, ceiling, and all that. The incident manager says search and rescue is over now, and now at the recovery stage. We await the decision of the government of our state regarding these structures that are very unstable that are around, uh, either to pull them down with the permission of the owners of such structures. The first phase of this uh, disaster has just been concluded. The debris have been removed from this area, from the immediate uh, center where the disaster took place. Other areas surrounding this place are still currently being assessed. What will happen to them, we will know in the course of events in the days ahead. Meanwhile, engineers are on site to assess every area affected in 500 meter radius of this place. Uh, we'll get this result in the days ahead um, as we monitor events unfolding on this developing story. From Bodija, Ibadan, the state capital, Bukola Oriowo, Channel Television News. The Lagos State Government on Sunday announced a ban on the use and distribution of styrofoam and other single-use plastics in the state with immediate effect. This was announced by the Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Mr. That is Takumbo Wahab, in a statement he personally signed. According to Mr. Wahab, the decision was reached following the menace which the single-use plastics, especially the non-biodegradable styrofoam, was causing the environment. He added that most drainage channels in the state are daily clogged by styrofoam through its indiscriminate distribution and usage despite the regular cleaning and evacuation of the drains with humongous amount. 
He reiterated that the large chunk of litter across major roads and markets which Loma contends with daily is made up of styrofoam. The commissioner further added that the state government cannot fold its hands and watch the continued desecration of its environment, especially for a coastal city. Mr. Wahab has subsequently directed the State Waste Management Authority, Loma, and the kick against the disciplined CHI to immediately commence implementation of the ban. He asked two agencies to clamp down on all the production companies and distribution outlets for styrofoam in the state to prevent further distribution. The commissioner advised producers, distributors, and end users of these styrofoam packs to take the ban seriously and find alternatives or risk heavy fines and other penalties, including sealing of their premises. Joining us now for further discussions on this is an environmentalist, Mr. Deji Akinpelu. Thank you for coming on Newsroom Series Southwest Today. Thanks for having me, Olumide. It's our pleasure. Nothing can constitute a nuisance to uh, waste disposal agencies such as styrofoam, especially because of its non-biodegradable nature. It does not break down and is a threat to environmental uh, sanitation as well as the environment in general. How do you assess the recent ban and the use of styro on the use of styrofoam by the Lagos State Government? Well, my immediate assessment is um, basically that uh, the ban is something that environmentalists um, all over the world have constantly advocated for. Um, yeah, the ban at some point is very, very necessary. But however, what is of a major concern is the immediate ban, uh, whereby we don't have um, an opportunity to face out um, this product uh, that uh, has its, this massive uh, environmental um, effect. Um, the, the immediate ban is what is worrisome because it has grievous uh, economic implications. Um, stakeholders, critical stakeholders uh, within the, um, the the plastic production uh, value chain are going to be adversely affected without any timing of uh, having alternatives. Um, so that is what is pretty much um, worrisome. It affects everyone, both the um, big producer and the woman just by the roadside trying to sell uh, um, foodstuff, uh, you know, so uh, packaged food. Um, so it's too worrisome. And the, the, the ban is also not coming with so much clarity. So what specific um, single-use plastics are we banning here? Um, there are several examples of single-use plastics that we have. Um, pet bottles, um, pure water sachets, uh, single-use plastic, uh, straws, etc., etc. Uh, so the government needs to do better uh, in terms of bringing out the details of what is being banned and a better response to also is if timing um you know to give out a face out timing facing out a product and giving timing to it is also to state what and what is going to happen during the face out time uh, what collaborations what alternatives are you encouraging this um um, these manufacturers to seek or these uh, businesses need to need to find, you understand? Uh, so um, it, it's a good move, but it's not coming with so much clarity um, and it's coming with so much uh, um, high-handedness as far as I am concerned. I think we should, we should do it in a more humane, um, sensitive and uh, in a more strategic manner. And then a whole lot of clarity, like I said, has to come in terms of what the commissioner actually needs. Indeed. In the same vein, how practical will it be to, for the outright ban without prior notice for these products that are packaged in these single-use plastics for it to effectively be carried out across the country? Well, if I hear you very well, they said how practical it is an immediate ban. A ban is practicable. But an immediate ban uh, is kind of funny, you understand? It's chaotic. Uh, you almost throw the system into, uh, you know, just imagine, um, like I was coming, driving this morning, 
funny enough, I just noticed uh, several shops selling styrofoam. <laughs> And you just imagine somebody just walk up into one shop and say, I'm a local government official, I'm from Loma, I am packing this, I'm selling this. You, you, an immediate ban like that, you are, you are eating almost a, a confusion. You understand? That is not practicable. So even the malls that you go to, uh, when you are given the plastic bags to go, what's going to happen? Has anybody complied? So you need to send out your own news group to say, okay, let us check out the rate of um, compliance. Even if when people comply, what effect are you creating? What level of economic hardship, confusion, uh, losses uh, are people going to um, experience? So this is quite um, insensitive. Um, I don't think it's clearly the intentions of the governor. Um, I think... Uh, it, it looks funny on a Sunday afternoon. I mean, the word just goes out there. Relying on existing laws, actually, you understand that the commissioner made reference to Mesra laws, the Lagos state laws. But it is also important to note that these same um, laws are being, um, policies are also being checked. There's the Lagos state plastic policy that is still under pretty much review. Nezra is still meeting with uh, stakeholders. Uh, uh, of pet um, producers of pet bottles. Are we, is pet, pet bottles are they in, are they included? You understand? So okay, we have Thank to you. have that Thank discussion. Right? Yes, the discussion that must be had. It cannot be overstated. In the meantime, the uh, danger of improper disposal of plastics to the environment. We thank you so much, Mr. Deji Akinpelu, who's an environmentalist, for coming on the program today. Thank you very much for having me. Meanwhile, the Lagos state government says it is committed to implement the five-year agricultural and food system roadmap to achieve 40% food self-sufficiency by 2025. This is according to the state commissioner for agriculture, Abisola Lusanya, who made this known at the Lagos Food System Stakeholders Meeting in Lagos. Data released by the National Bureau of Statistics in November last year says Nigerians spend 61.08 trillion naira on food and other household items and service in the first few months of 2023. In Lagos State, with a population spilling over 20 million and counting, food consumption is also on the high side. According to the state government, in 2022, Residents consume 4.5 billion naira worth of food daily. This growing figure seems to be putting the government on its toes to ensure it becomes self-sufficient by 2025. In achieving this goal, the Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, is meeting with stakeholders in the agricultural sector to discuss the state of food systems roadmap and highlight the success story of the government in rice production red meat initiative and other different food value chains. In 2021, April, precisely on the 22nd, we had launched the agricultural five-year roadmap. And that roadmap had timelines as well. And for the timelines, we had specified projects, initiatives, activities that were to be carried out all through to 2025. The year 2023, we were able to do roughly about 15,000 tons of pilot, which is uh, over 100 and something, 120,000 bags of, uh, of rice. This year, we are hoping, and I will go through a couple of it, to do 100,000 100, tons of pilot. Questions are raised by some of the participants on the issue of the Google feed lot and movement of fresh food items. I want to confirm where are we on the Bodo Kingdoms? When are we seeing the allocation? Is there anything we are doing regarding uh, moving fresh food items via train? Uh, that can easily reduce the cost of food in Lagos by up to 25%, if not more. While the State Commissioner for Agriculture and her colleague in charge of the Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget respond to issues raised, the State Head of Service says the government is reintroducing Operation Feed the Nation to make Lagos self-sufficient. Establishing a feed lot, uh, on average you're talking about five hectares, is not an easy feat. And based on the last uh, stakeholders uh, meet we had in collaboration with FAO, we know that minimal 
you will need nothing less than I think almost a hundred million naira to even take off with. Whilst we will not be able to do everything, you know, at least come this time next year, we'll also be held accountable and said, you know, the ones that we put in, what have we done with it? And this will give us all kind of say, tick, tick, tick. If you remember, for the youth of us that are here, you remember Operation Fit the Nation? So we're bringing it back, are we? This is what we're doing. Um, and you know, the, the government recognized agriculture a long time ago. And it's one of the areas, in fact, it's the only area that it allows civil servants to participate in. So every civil servant can participate in agriculture, in addition to what you're doing. Going forward, the Lagos State Government says the stakeholders meeting will be held quarterly to ensure that all areas under the agricultural sector is moving at the same pace with projections of a remarkable achievement for the future. Welcome back. The Lagos State Police Command have arrested 37 suspects allegedly engaged in varying crimes across the state. Commissioner of Police in Lagos, Sadigoke Fayoade, explained that they were apprehended for crimes including armed robbery, stealing, cultism, and unlawful possession of firearms. He added that a total of 16 firearms, including a toy pistol, 72 live cartridges, 75 live ammunition, was recovered from the suspects. <laughs> Till today, we have a total of uh, 37 suspects who have engaged in varying crimes, including armed robbery, stealing, cultism, or long possession of firearm. Uh, one of the cases we were able to crack is conspiracy and cultism. We were able to arrest uh, number one and two and three cultures in Ikurudu who have been terrorizing the area. We talk cases of uh, cultism, robbery, extortion, and other things. On January 1st, 2024, at about 10, 010 hours, operators of Lagos State Command, upon credible intelligence concerning activities of some hoodlums terrorizing Ikurudu and its environment, swung into action and arrested one Balu Mutola, AK-50, AK-50 and age 35, Tuni Oladipo, male, age 43, Rasa Ridwan, male, age 27, and Abimbola Aru, male, age 29, in connection with court-related activities. The following items were recovered from them. Three English double barrel gun, one pump action, rifle, one reigning model 700 rifle, one locally made pistol. 74 rounds of live ammunition, 68 rounds of cartridges, one Barretta pistol magazine, four axes, three daggers, and five cutlasses. From this recovery, you can see that these people are more than cultists. They are not different from armed robbers. From crime to education, a legal luminary, Area Febabalola, has called for a total upgrade of Nigerian universities stressing that the federal government should stop giving approvals for new universities since the existing ones are not funded. This was disclosed at a meeting with a group of well-meaning Nigerians led by Senator Ibrahim Abdullahi Gober, who visited the Afe Babalala University in Adwekiti. The only thing I private university facing proof for the degree that can carry. <laughs> I knew what I went through to get my license to study this place. I want to take it up with uh, the Minister of Education. I'm going to write, I will tell you, you have a copy of my letter on it again. Because I'm concerned about quality of education. When you have quality of education, you are, you are above. The, the only thing that you need to do now is to pray to God. That's all. So those who are asking for four trees, New universities where the old ones are there are destroyed the education. They are not in, they are not Nigerians. A true Nigerian will not think of stealing public money. A true Nigerian will want to work for no money. I'm an example of those who had worked for many years for this country without taking combo.
what you are doing here, since I came to this university, I've not traveled out once again. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was traveling out every year. The Adeola Aziz Community Care Foundation, a non-governmental organization, has facilitated a 5G Airtel network mass to a Yoshun community in the Jabu Northeast local government area of Ogun East, Senatorial District of the state. Chief promoter of the foundation, Adeola Aziz, says this has become imperative in view of the glaring neglect of the community and the need for easy communication and a new lease of life to the agrarian people. The foundation also gifted and activated about 500 Airtel SIM cards to residents with national identification numbers to improve communication, facilitate trade, commerce and security amongst residents. Enyoshu community is located in Ijebu Northeast local government area of Ogun State in southwest Nigeria, where over 90% of the inhabitants engage in agriculture, majorly cultivating cocoa, cassava, kola nut, and oil palm. <laughs> The largely agrarian community lacks basic amenities such as proper road infrastructure, electricity and internet and mobile network connectivity. Residents say they have appealed severally to relevant authorities to help lift their community. Um, life with this area is kind of bad. No electricity, you don't have good roads, even education here is kind of poor. Yeah, we want the government to do a lot and we're very, very happy. If government can come and assist us, we're very, very happy. Like the bad roads, um, the electricity and many more. Sure? Apparently concerned about the plight of the residents, the Adiola Aziz Community Care Foundation, in collaboration with Airtel Nigeria, recently launched the fifth generation mobile network facility in the community, which covers a two kilometer radius. The move, according to the foundation, is to provide network connectivity to facilitate seamless communication for improved security, trade and commerce among residents and beyond their community. Here is a new show where we are, where, 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 where you called Orita or Italawa, right? It's a forgotten community. And in this community, there are over 5,000 uh, people or more. Now, why is this community so... Why am I passionate about it? This local government is Ijebu Northeast, right? And it's one of the poorest, but the natural resources that this community, this world, speaks of. You're talking of palm kernel, you're talking of timber, you're talking of cocoa, you're talking of plantain, and many more. We don't need here, we've got the raw materials. And your shoe and other and Italawa where where we are today can stand as the natural resource, raw materials to build a chocolate factory. Beneficiaries with national identification numbers were captured and connected free of charge, with others asked to go and get their numbers. Right before the brought this mat here, because we are facing a lot of challenges due to network glitch. So right now we are very happy to be part of this network. So we thank God. I said them say why they not bring that to Paul when they long for up. Then told me say now this one that they use now. If you say them bring that one, it will for go far. But for this community now we still need more. But this community they will not use the local government here for any Ah, we we plenty here now. So many villages here. So if you can help us to bring another one for better. Residents applaud the gesture, saying they are excited to be connected to the rest of the state, Nigeria and the global community. Meanwhile, the Oshun State Government has justified its decision to order two traditional rulers in the state to vacate their stools. The State Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment, Mr. Kolak Walimi, in an interview with Channels Television, disclosed that the action of government is justified, and that it was not politically motivated. The APC in Oshun State had in a media release condemned the removal of the monarchs. 
insisting that it was biased and politically motivated. It argued that the monarchs were removed because they were installed by the APC administration of former Governor Kwegao Yetala. But Mr. Alimi explained that the administration of Senator Ademola Adeleke had implemented the recommendation of the White Paper from a committee on chieftaincy matters. We recall that uh, at the three lights of uh, the uh, administration of uh, former Governor Boyego Itola, uh, the government then started rushing to install some uh, traditional rulers uh, so as to perhaps for the best reason known to them. And this one caused opera. If you could recall, two persons were killed in Ikeno. Protests of protest in Ikeno, Ire, and uh, Ibadjo because of the, the studied ways uh, through which uh, the government has had then uh, installed, uh, purportedly installed some, some uh, traditional rulers. And so that was the reason via the executive order, the governor, uh, Senator Adimala, the Senator Adiliki set aside those appointments and set up a commission, uh, a committee to look into it. And so there is nothing like a political return or because it was done by last administration. The one on chief uh, matter, the mandate of that committee only covered those uh, uh, traditional rulers installed where there were crises and those that were installed after the defeat of a uh, Governor Dewey Uga Uyitola on July 16. Even among those that were installed, where there were no problems, uh, the committee didn't look at it. And that's Newsroom Southwest on Newsroom Series Today. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you for watching.